Thomas Partey obviously trained, but didn't travel. Yeah. Porto available for the match day squad. Tomorrow? Let's see. We have another session today. Um, obviously, he's been out for many, many months now, and uh, I will need to really nail um, the timing and uh, when he has enough in the time to um, to compete. But I think he's very close. Very close. Yeah. Same for Jesus. Same with Gabi as well. And uh, Zinchenko. He's done a few things, and, and Alex is not far too. And Tomiyasu. And Tomiyasu is still a little bit more, I think. OK, perfect. Thank you. So four of them racing against time, Tomiyasu not yeah. necessarily. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so the way you've spent the last 24, 48 hours, is you stayed overnight in Porto, yeah. is that right? A relaxing morning and then a leisurely flight back. Mm -hmm. So you've had chance to reflect with the players, look into their eyes, yeah. see how they're feeling off the back of that defeat. What do you see? Well, what I see is a team that can't wait to to play Porto at home now. And, um, and with that result, obviously, we have created uh, a fantastic Champions League night of football uh, in front of our people and the lights uh, where you need to beat them uh, to go through. And the task is very clear now. But what does it mean about getting back to the Premier League and the determination to bounce back straight away? That's it. Porto is gone. Uh, we discussed it. Uh, we know the things that we did very well, the things that we have to um, improve. It tells you again about the small margin in Champions League because we have one of the biggest chances in the 91st minute with Gavi. If he scores that goal, we are one nil up. It's a fantastic, mature, disciplined performance in the Champions League. Um, you lose it in the last second and, and it's something else. And, uh, and that's clear, but we cannot lose sight of, of where we are, what we are doing, and uh, the importance of the match tomorrow, and, and the full energy and focus is, is there. The last time, you only lost actually once before in the Champions League this season at Lons. You mm. came back and you beat Manchester City three days later. Yeah. Looking for similar this time? Uh, that's a reaction that we need, uh, and we want to create an atmosphere in the stadium from the beginning. And, uh, I ask everybody to go there tomorrow night with full energy because the team is going to need it and, um, and we are in a really good moment in the Premier League and, and we want to continue to be there and, and tomorrow's game is vital to achieve that. Under the floodlights as well, which is unusual on a Saturday night, the atmosphere against Liverpool, for example, which yeah. was a bit earlier in the evening. Are you looking for that, that kind of atmosphere? from the Always time? better. So we can do better, the team to play better, the crowd to be even more energetic uh, with us in every single ball. And uh, that's what we have to build tomorrow. And lots of celebrations afterwards if you win. Sorry? Lots of celebrations afterwards if you win. Yeah, I don't know if outside or inside the dressing room, <laughs> but let's win first. <laughs> um, is it unfinished business? We won't go into the nitty gritty of the game, the point that you all feel was stolen from you at Newcastle, but is there an aspect of unfinished business with you and, and the players when Newcastle are concerned? With every club, there is always a, a history. There is always um, what happened before, what is going to happen next. And uh, we know the importance of the game and we just focus on what we have to do. Thank you. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Um, back at the Emirates after three away games. I bet that feels good. Yeah, it feels like a long time, that uh, that Liverpool game. But, uh, yeah, it's been a while and um, we love playing at home and, uh, and tomorrow is a fantastic game. What's the difference between the Arsenal that lost 1-0 at St James's Park and the Arsenal going in tomorrow's game? Well, let's see tomorrow. Um, even them as well, they have changed a little bit. I think uh, they have a few players that they might not be available. Um, the same with us. Uh, so let's see, every game is very different and the approach sometimes away and home can, can change. Are you expecting Newcastle to have a similar approach to Porto, maybe? And in that case, how are you going to, to deal with that? I don't know, because normally they, they have a very different approach to game, especially when they don't have the ball. Um, so very two very different teams, I think. Are you going to use that defeat against Porto to get an extra bit of motivation, or do you want to forget about that and think about what you've done in the Premier League in we recent weeks? What happened there in another competition is there. The, what you cannot deny is that what is in your tummy after a, a defeat and that, that we have to use it in a really powerful way to, to be even better. Thank you, Mikael. Hi, Mikael. Um, how are you? I'm very good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, Timber, are we going to see him back before the end of the season? Uh, I really hope so. He's doing really well. It's been... Uh, He's been with some players around now on the pitch. Um, he's going to start to do some bits with us in the next week or so. And then we have to see how 
and that evolves how his confidence level, his fitness level, and uh, and hopefully the answer is yes. Because it seems now as we come towards the real run-in, and after this weekend, you, Liverpool and City would all have played the same number of games. Your squad is in the best shape at the moment, fitness-wise. You know, there are injuries at mm. City, more injuries at Liverpool than both. But barring Timber, it looks like within the next week or two, you could have almost a fully fit squad to choose from. Yeah, obviously we have missed uh, some big players and, and we still are, but uh, you have to adapt to that. Obviously, we want them back. We need them back as quick as possible. And uh, and we know the impact that those players are going to have uh, when we have the full squad ready. 11 goals in your last two league games. Has that answered all the critics who were telling you during January, you've got to go and buy a striker, you've got to go and buy Ivan Tony, you've got to go and get somebody to put the ball in the back of the net? No, I think it shows that the team has uh, the ability to um, to score goals and to share the goals and, and that we have to do it consistently. And that's the, the demand at the end of the season. You're going to have to score a certain amount of goals and not concede a certain amount of goals in order to to have the best chance to to win titles. And that's undeniable. What, what is it about Newcastle as well the last sort of couple of seasons, or certainly last season and, and then St James's part earlier this season, that, that makes them so difficult for you to beat? Because it's, it's looked like those games are very, very sort of close between the two of you. Well, they are a really good team. They are very well coached. They are fantastic players. They have um, great spirit within the team and, uh, and they are difficult to beat for us and for, for many, many opponents. And last one, you've beaten City and Liverpool this season already in the Premier League. Um, many people would still see you as being the outsiders of the three to win the title. Are you in the position right now, though, that you would love to be in? Well, I think we are in a really good position and um, and we are where we want to be. Um, I don't know, we can be better. As I said before, I think the most important thing is that, that we continue to believe, to perform at the level that we are doing and we have the squad available. And if we have those two things, we're going to give them um, a real go. We, we spoke to Declan after the game on uh, on Wednesday, and he was talking a bit about this team sort of learning some sort of savviness and you know the element of the dark arts that you get in the game. Is that something you feel the team needs to maybe develop as they sort of mature as players? That sort of bit of edge. Yes, we certainly can develop um, a lot of things, and those experiences are really relevant to judge whether we were or we weren't just because a goal. I don't think it's. Um, is that fair? And I was very clear with them uh, about it because I believe that they did a lot of things right. But uh, but yeah, and managing games and things like that, uh, we can still improve. But in a year's time, for sure, uh, we can improve and we can improve in, in our build-up phase and we can improve <laughs> in our restarts and we can improve in many areas. I think when a lot of people you know, speak of these Arsenal players and know these Arsenal players, I think everyone would say they're obviously very nice people. Can you have that off the pitch? And then when you go on the pitch, flick that switch and have that edge, have that bit of a dark arts. Can you be a nice guy and be a bad guy on the pitch? Yeah, I don't know if you're a bad guy, but uh, you have to be tricky, you have to be smart, you have to be streetwise, and you have to try to take advantages in every situation, and uh, they know that. And is that something you, you sort of coach on the pitch, off the pitch? How do you develop that in a player to make That's a thing that has to be developed. You don't have it, that's for sure, because the best teams, the best players, they have, they have that. Hi Mikael, it's, it's nearly four months now since uh, what happened at Newcastle. Obviously, your response afterwards and the club statement and everything. Since then, do you think you've seen a, a noticeable improvement in, in officiating the VAR? Well, that's what we all wanted, that at the end uh, the decisions are better. I think the last stats that, um, that came across showed that it was a significant uh, improvement and a lot of decisions were getting right. So hopefully that's the case and we continue to do that. Your response at the time was criticised by some, but do you feel you being able to talk about it and bringing it up like that has, has helped that whole conversation around around it? I don't know. I talked uh, the way I felt and, and I was very straight. Um, and uh, I did it in a way that um, it was pretty strong, but within the law because I didn't get charged for that. Um, so that says the story. Mm, Hi. Um, on Wednesday, it was obviously quite a stop-start game. There was lots of fouls. I think the ball was in play for about 50 percent <coughs> quite similar to the, the home game against Newcastle last year. You said that your team can learn to do better and will learn from those situations. What do you think they can learn between Wednesday and potentially a similar uh, test on Saturday? Well, we have to learn, but as well, uh, we need um, 
the game to be managed in the right way and that's not for us to do and that's for the referees to do and um, I will leave it for them because it's uh, it's obvious uh, again what happened on Wednesday and we have to deal with that and we have to be ready for that but uh, at the end it's their job and they have to manage that. And before the Nottingham Forest game you spoke obviously last season there was that desire for revenge you said everyone could feel it in their stomachs going into the game. Have you sensed a similar atmosphere amongst your players this time going into the Newcastle match? Well, I could sense in the dressing room straight away that we wanted to play the next day, if possible. Uh, and after that defeat, that's the feeling that you get. And, uh, and I'm sure when they come back uh, in an hour or two, uh, I'm going to be seeing that desire again. Thanks, John. Michael, Hi. Uh, 13 games to go this season. This, this stage last season uh, was the Bournemouth game, that dramatic 3-2 win, where there's, it felt like there was a lot of emotional energy being spent already. How much is left in the tank at this stage? A lot, because I think a lot of players they haven't played um, significant minutes this season and some important players as well. So I can sense uh, that there are still five or six that uh, that they have still a lot to effort to the team. And the other ones, because after what happened last year, we want to make sure that, that this season is, is very different. And, and that brings a lot of energy because because we know what we are facing. Obviously, the portal you brought in one sub, there's maybe talk of you know not using the bench as much as other teams. Because you've got five or six players there, do you think that it's maybe their time to step up at some point in the next two months? There'll be a part time to play? Yeah, but we have made changes in the last few games, and every game is different in relation to what is happening. And um, and rightly or wrongly, which at the end are decided uh, those decisions by the results at the end, um, we try to make the right call. That's it. Just finally, um, how different does it feel? approaching the run into that compared to last season. You know, it feels like after that Bournemouth game, it felt like you know, towards the end, it was almost, it felt like Arsenal were, were there, you know, it was mm. theirs to win. Does it feel slightly different this time because there's three teams competing and you're on the shoulder rather than leading? I feel a lot of excitement, uh, especially internally, because we're, we are right in the mix and, and we want to continue to, to be there because we are in the Champions League and we have a, a fantastic game. Uh, to play at the Emirates and yeah, externally probably is different because the expectations are much more focused in the other two teams and um, and that's it.